I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the Restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Good evening and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl. And it may not actually be evening where you're at. Sorry about that. <laughs> anyway, I'm really happy to introduce to you tonight, today, whenever, is Taylor Winder. We met your husband last week, Nick. Yes. And what a delight. Yes. And enthused about Jesus and, and mm. the gospel. And it's just exciting. Yes. Yeah, yes. he's gone through quite a quite a story and yes. you've got one as well. Mm -hmm. You yes. were born in the church, is mm -hmm. that right? Yes. Where were you born? I was born in Logan. Um, I grew up until the age of nine in Farmington and then a brief moment in Boise, Idaho. And then we, uh, well, my parents built yeah. a home in Brigham City. And from sixth grade on, I grew up there. Oh, so. Always surrounded by Mormons. And Very much so. Part of your culture and yes, everything. Yep. And baptized at eight. And, yes. Okay. Yes. So. And you, did you ever take seminary? You know, I did not. No, didn't take no, that was offered more in middle school, and by then yeah. um, we had left. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. And what? Well, what had happened? I guess is. Well, going back, yeah. um, my mom is the one that kind of paved the way. The Lord um, called her out first, and. In doing so, she took me and my sister <laughs> along with her. <laughs> no, she did. Okay. Um, my dad was a little apprehensive, but um, ultimately the Lord got him too. Yeah. So um, when we were in Farmington is where we were, um, going to church, doing everything that you do and all your friends do and neighbors do around here. Singing the songs you oh, were singing you, earlier. If you'd like you... me to sing, I can. <laughs> <laughs> you no, know, choose the right and all those. You songs. betcha. Yeah. Um, so, but I didn't realize um, the turmoil my mom was going through. Um, lots of questions on her side um, that ultimately brought her to leaving. But um, the first memory that I have where um, I took pause at what this religion or what this was that we were practicing was, yeah. was when I was baptized. Um, we invited all the family, um, all of my relatives, everyone is um, still very active in the Mormon faith. And they'd all come because when you turn eight, you get baptized. <laughs> That's what you do. And I was looking forward to getting my Book of Mormon with my name on it and a CTR ring and the whole bit. And the day came and my dad baptized me and we were in the water and he started going through the script of what he had to say. And we, he'd get to the end and he put me under the water and I'd come back out. Well, eight times later, oh my. Um, because he couldn't get the words right. You never lifted a toe or anything? No, nope, it was never a toe or <laughs> hair or a nose. It was the wrong words. He couldn't get the, the words right. And, but they'd let him go through the whole thing the immersion without, and everything without interrupting. Without interrupting. Oh. Um, and so eight, eight times time. had that happened. That could be a record. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it really was. And so you can imagine my mom was just dying, just like internally, just we shouldn't be doing this, yeah. but it's all you know. And so it's what you do. 
And um, so I left, I went in the back changing room and I was getting undressed out of my white robe and a lady came back and she said, I'm sorry, but um, he didn't get it right again. You're gonna have to put on um, the, the clothes, clothes again and, go back and we'll go out and do it one more time. For a ninth time. Right, and I remember <clears throat> right then as I was pulling up the wet robe thinking, why would God care? And I, I had no idea of what that meant or anything, but it just was off. Well, and so um, put back on the clothes and walked back out and there was everyone and my sweet dad, you know, just he, dying. Must have been embarrassed. Oh, yeah. so much so. Um, but went through it again and he got it right. <laughs> And so then the day progressed as normal. And but then you were baptized. And I was baptized, right. And a year later? And a year later um, is when my mom um, went through her um, leaving, um, if you will. Um, I do remember up to that point, my mom and I and my sister, we'd get home from church and she'd pull into the garage and the door would go down and she'd ask us everything that we learned. Mm. And her main emphasis was, what did we learn about Jesus? My mom always loved Jesus, and she just clinged to him um, from a very young age. And she didn't understand that per se, but uh, she always just wanted more of Jesus. And so she would ask us girls about what, you'd learned, what we'd learned you know, specifically about Jesus. Well, because even going back to the baptism, I always sent, when I would talk to the eight-year-olds, you I would always say, well, you're going to join the church. Right. You know, you're going to get baptized yeah. and become a member of the church. Right. It was never about no. you're going to become part of or Jesus. No, I mean, he was right. kind of in the, you know, in the subtitle yeah. there, but not, right. that wasn't why you were getting right. baptized, right. was it? Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. so yeah. So then when she left, then we moved to Boise. Okay. Um, and that was where I experienced uh, my first um non-denominational Christian churches, we'd go and we'd, um, we'd go to different ones um, every Sunday, kind of just testing out the waters Did you like and those? seeing. Yeah, I loved that I just could wear normal clothes. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. And you I notice mean, differences. Oh, guess, absolutely, between, yeah. you know. Um, but I was just following my mom's lead at that point. And so, mm -hmm. and at that point, my dad had not left. Um, my dad was very just, he was just inactive. He was inactive and um, and then once we uh, went back to Utah, 14 months later, I think it was, um, and we settled in Brigham City, that's when Dad got um, angry. Uh, you know, <laughs> Sue, why are you doing this to our girls? It's going to, you're going to make it so hard for them growing up here. They're not going to have friends. You know, all yeah. those preconceived kind of notions that you would have. Um, surrounded by but such a, a dominant religion. But eventually God taps him on the shoulder. Yes, and exactly. So, you know. He went to go prove them <laughs> wrong and the and opposite that, happened. Yeah. So, yeah. so you end up, uh, of course, finishing high school. Yeah, so there, I, I then, finished high school in Brigham to... City and uh, right after graduating I moved to California where I joined a performing arts group um, to pursue <laughs> being famous. Was that fun? <laughs> It was fun, but in all of that, uh, God was doing a work in me um, that I can now look back and see His fingerprints over it all. Really? Um, and so... Lessons when that you're, you were learning. Right. Maybe. When you're pursuing the world, um, you're pursuing darkness. And, um, and so it's hard. Mm. You don't even know, though. You just think that that's the normal. Yeah. Um, and so while I was there... Um, you know, I just, that was just kind of the beginning of the end for me. Um, so went there, uh, went back east and toured um, with the group a year later and then um, was exhausted. I was exhausted and knew it was time to go to school. So mm. I moved back to Utah um, and went to Weber State for a few semesters and then transferred to the U and that's where I graduated. So oh, what did you graduate in? Journalism broadcasting. Wow, yeah. how about that? So I'm feeling kind of comfortable here. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you are. <laughs> and so all this time, you, you mentioned earlier to me that yeah. uh, you've always had a, a relationship with God or always felt close to yeah, Him. Yeah, you know, I always knew there was there was a God, there was a higher power or something. I never went full-blown atheist um, because even though, even while I was growing up until leaving uh 
for California, I went to church with my mom, the church that she ultimately brought us to and that my parents ended up going to, active in youth group, um, but nothing ever penetrated. Um, I think at a Bible camp, I accepted the Lord. Um, that is one thing that is highlighted in my memory of, you know, at a worship service, I accepted Christ, but nothing ever really stuck. I continued yeah. living in sin. Um, and so, so yeah, I, um, what was your question? Going well, back. no, that's fine. And then eventually, no, no you came back and, and, oh, yeah. and graduated, I graduated. guess. Okay, yeah. now I don't know where we're at exactly. Yeah, but. so I, I went to school, graduated, um, and a week after I graduated, I broke off an engagement, I quit my job, um, I packed up everything and I moved back home wow. because I had <laughs> hit bottom. Yeah. Even though I thought I was pursuing all the success and everything Just that you're supposed to do. Huh? Um, but only Christ satisfies. And so when God calls you, He calls you and He shows you that. And so yeah. um, I went home and I sat on a couch for nine months healing just of life. Just didn't feel... Let me down. Yeah. I don't know. Everything was gone and I didn't have anywhere to turn. And how old were you? At that point I was 23. Wow. So. And just feeling like it was... Yeah. What now? Just disappointed. And, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so then what happened? Kind of an interesting So then experience. moving back home at 23, um, now my, my family's been saved. So my mom and dad are um, new creations. And it's evident uh, the spirit was active and alive. Could you tell the flowing. difference? Oh, um, night and day, night and day. Um, my what, dad what exactly? specifically. What exactly? Just sense of freedom, uh, less yes, guilt. Yes, like just less... this this load lift, lifted off. I don't know. It was just, or maybe even like a suppressing cloud just breaking away and just light. That's a good way to uh, say You know. It. Yeah. Um, and so as I was sitting there on this couch uh, and life was just like circling around me, it was consistent. This wasn't some trendy thing that my parents decided to try to make themselves better. Yeah. Um, it was this authentic brokenness being restored. Trusting in God. Yeah, it was just, Jesus. yeah, it was beautiful. And this talk um, of about Jesus, it wasn't this religious, it was just this relationship. Yeah. And so it was in that moment as I witnessed all of, as I witnessed them and I witnessed this community um, around them coming in the house, just living life um, in Christ that I said, you know, I want this. I don't know what it is, but I, I, want, I want this. this. Right. You mentioned a little Heart in the Home experience. What was that about? Uh, yes, Heart in the Home uh, by Sean McCraney. Uh, that was actually back when I was living in California. I'd come home. I don't know if it was for Thanksgiving or Christmas, but I'd come home to visit and they were having this heart in the home. And I was, you know, and all I knew at that point was religion. I just, uh, it's how I viewed things. I knew it was some guy out of Mormonism. But if you, you assumed that if there were any, if there was any religion, it was Mormonism. Would right. you think that maybe? Yeah. Well, no, I didn't think, no. okay. I didn't think that if there was a right religion, it was Mormonism. Okay. I just, I was very bitter towards Mormonism still. Okay. My heart was very hard towards it. And so Sean McCraney came in the house and my parents had invited um, all the neighbors and other people, Christians, Mormons, inactive people. Um, and I sat in the back and as Sean talked and um, questions were asked, you know, I just sat back there boiling. I was so angry. Really? And I didn't, and, and as I even say that, I don't even know why I was angry. Um, just that he would be challenging. But he, you know, right, you know. just who are you? And so ultimately it came to a place where um, I just went, I just went into him and I did. I, who are you? Who in are front you? Of everybody. Yes, who are you to sit here um, claiming that you have the truth? I don't even remember what I said, but I just let him have it. And all he said to me was um, that he understood and that I should seek and that he would pray for me. And, um, and that was it. And then I just kind of stopped talking and just let the night progress. But I do remember that specifically. Interesting. Yeah. So where do you meet Nick? So I met Nick 
after the healing process, um, I knew I wasn't going to meet anyone like I used to meet people in the clubs or <laughs> night on the town or college, you know, that was done. So I went online and we met on Match.com. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and love at first sight? Oh. Well, kind of, huh? I say that. No, I'm just kidding. No. Um, you know, we talked by email for a while, ultimately met, and it was just really nice because all of the first dating kind of stuff had already been yeah. talked about. And yeah. so um, it was definitely a connection right at the beginning. Um, and it was lovely. So, well, that's neat. yeah. And was he, uh, where was he at at this time? Now, or where were you well, at? Well, I was, was very much seeking, uh, reading the word. Um, and I was very open with him about that. He was in a place where his family was very active in the faith. He had just moved back to Utah from college. And, uh, it's all he knew, um, but he wasn't active at all. He didn't mm. buy it, but he wasn't seeking at all. But I was very upfront from the very beginning. And um, we had discussions, at, um, and at times they were a little heated <laughs> because uh, regardless if you don't believe in it, it's what it's all you know. And so you're, sure. and, and you're gonna protect your family yeah. and, and defend, defend them. Yeah. And so, and that's what he did until, um, he started reading the word and God started working on his heart too. So, and he said he started seeing the influence of your fa uh, parents. No. Yes. That there could, he said there could be too much of a good thing or something. Yeah, I mean, you definitely, I was, and I was to a place too where, you know, we, this is we gather with it, my family yeah. and it's all we talked about. Yeah. It's all, we couldn't get enough of Jesus. Um, Isn't that an of amazing what difference? He had done. Um, to our home specifically. I used to go on one and two week vacations with family. Mm -hmm. and we could go that entire time mm -hmm. and not talk about church or yeah. religion. Maybe who, what, who has what callings and who's right. going on a mission, who's getting right. married. Never about Jesus. Right. Yeah. Now. Yeah. So we were the we Jesus. We can't go freaks. a few hours. <laughs> yeah. Or, so Nick or would that. come and he would experience this and he's like, whoa, I don't know if I can do this. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But eventually God softened his heart and right. praise right. God for that. Praise God. Yeah. So. Well, so you've got some exciting things going. Oh, you've had two children. I've, we've had two you children, two yes. Children, we have a little you... girl who's four and a little boy who's one, yeah. Afton and Samuel. Oh, so well, they're sweet. a delight. Well, we learned just a little bit last week that, uh, or last time that uh, Nick said that you maybe on a new journey here and yes. with Russ East. And the, yes. The, so tell us a little, about, a yeah. little bit about that and how that um, came about. Well, we are going to be joining uh, Russ East with Utah Partnerships for Christ in July. Uh, we're in the working it out and preparing right now. We're going to move into the Blue House, uh, which is kind of the base camp um, of where mission teams come to serve and evangelize. Uh, the greater northern and How Utah. big are these groups? We did learn that sometimes they're college age and uh -huh. high school age yep. kids. And they, it can range from a small group of seven or eight to 20. Wow. Um, yeah, that come and... And they have leaders, I guess. And they have leaders, yep. Them. And throughout that seven to 10 uh, day period, they come and they go to Temple Square. Um, they go and serve uh, polygamous um, colonies, um, other things, other Mormon outreaches, whether they might come and talk to you or... Would um, they go to a church? And yes, speak, uh -huh, they, it, um, they'd or? go, well, they'd go to a church um, hoping to have dialogue and um, they typically are able to invite people back to the Blue House for a meal, for discussions throughout the week. Um, and then it's located right across the street from Weber State University. Yeah, that's and a great location. Right, and so yeah. the, the teams will go up there, engage in conversations, invite students over. And so we are planning to move into the house um, and offer um, a hospitality ministry um, because these mission teams come out and their faith is rocked. They... Um, in the sense of questioning their faith? Not necessarily questioning their faith, but understanding the depth of their faith um, and perhaps just how ill-equipped they are to go and have discussions with people um, and defend Jesus. Um, mm. And so they come here and they're met with a religion who also claims Jesus. And, and uses a lot of the same words. Exactly. And so they come back. Different definitions. I exactly. Guess, yeah. And so they come back from a day of serving um, 
and evangelizing, and they're defeat. They're defeated. Um, they're, and so we want to be there to minister to them, to build them back up, to remind them of who it is that they serve and the truth that they have, um, and love on them and encourage them in their faith. Um, and have you had met some of these groups before? Um, we have. We actually we've had a had couple of them live with us, oh. um, and we just had a gal who had come out on three mission trips, um, wow. and God brought her back to Utah. She's a teacher now here, and she's just on fire and so excited to live here now. And she goes to Temple Square on Sundays by herself. She just wants to be, um, as she says, in the mecca. Of Mormonism. And she talks to Mormons. And she talks to him. She has an evangelistic heart. And God just broke her heart for here. And so she was living with us since October. She moved out the first or second week of January. And um, How does she yeah. approach Mormons? What does she say? Um, well, she... Has she shared that? It, it depends on the situation. But for her, where God really got a hold of her was... Um, at a camp that she went to um, in high school um, where the group was taken downtown of where this um, camp was out and they were asked to approach people and ask them where they thought they went when they died. Oh. Um, and so through that, God then um, kind of shaped her and brought Mormonism into her view um, and her heart really just pulled towards um, people who claim Jesus but are n it's not the true Jesus. Yeah. And, and so she Wonder ended what, up finding UPFC and okay. coming out and leading groups. So, What do you think she was hearing from Mormons about that? the answer to that question? Um, Where do you think you're going? Uh, they hope that... I hope I've done enough. Right. They, there's no certainty um, across the board. And that's been our experience as well, uh, meeting with missionaries, you know. Um, and I think that that's ultimately why God called me out of the darkness and I was able to fully just embrace his truth was because I always, this life can't just be just frivolous living or this religious working out. Um, ultimately, we're all going to die. Yeah. So where are you going to go? And do you know for sure? And so, you know, that's her, been her approach a lot of times. Um, that's been an underlining, you know, one of my first questions in speaking with missionaries is... And what do, do, the, what do they usually say then? Oh, we just hope. Yeah, they, we just, we just, we'll, we, we hope. My, um, for me, when I ask, it's, do you know that you'll be at the feet of Jesus when you die? Have you done enough? And it's always, well, we hope, we hope, but, but no, I don't know. You know, there, know. there's no certainty. I, I don't know how to answer that. See, um, you know, Carla, my wife, yeah. kept asking me, um, are we going to make it? Mm. She was always right. asking that. Now, I had the confidence that I had gone through the priesthood and I'd, right. the temple, and I'd been married for time and all eternity, and so I felt confident I was going there. But she was always asking, well, are we going to make it? Yeah. And I would say, well, the promise is, is that we don't right. commit murder or do something right. silly like leave the church. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> that we would that we'd make it to the celestial kingdom. Mm. So, but I, yeah. I know there are a lot of people that uh, they don't have a good answer for that. We hope we right. hope we've done enough. Right, and that's where our hearts just break. Yeah. So. And as a Christian, how mm. would you answer that? Mm. Where will I go when I die? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, at the feet of Jesus. Um, to worship him for all well, eternity. He's just done everything for us. He's done us. everything. Yeah. I, I cannot express, and we didn't even tap into anything of what he has done for me, um, what he has redeemed. Uh, sometimes I'm just left in awe. I cannot believe the person I used to be um, and who I am now. Yeah. And well, we're just getting started. Me either. And as you know, as I've read the Bible now, as you have, yeah. I'm sure, that him being the good shepherd. Yes. And what that really means. Mm -hmm. As sheep, yes. we, we don't have anything to offer Nothing. as sheep, but we follow. Right, exactly. We trust the good shepherd. Yes. And there's a freedom in that. Yes. And then what about good works? Are they They're the, filthy rags. Yeah. They and they're not for are. saving. No, It's no. just because we love him and we, right. we do, do things because we... Yep, I live my life every day, morning, every morning, God, 
how can I glorify you today? Like, just use me, God. I'm a vessel. Just use me however you want. Now, I know you've had such a relationship with Mormons over yeah. your lifetime, yeah. family and, and everything. They don't see it that way, do they? No, no. And I, I don't understand, or I don't, I asked Nick this too, how do we get that message to them? And I know it's awkward, it's tough. He said he has a hard time sharing with his family. I have a very hard time with my family. Well, you know, um, I think God gives you those opportunities and it depends on the person. Um, not that we don't go and um, proclaim the truth, but just a few weeks ago, we had a Mormon in our Friday night group that we have. He was new, student from Weber State. Um, one of our friends invited him and he just, he couldn't get enough of what we were talking about. And Nick was not going to let him leave our house without hearing the gospel. <laughs> and he heard it. I mean, everyone in the group was just like, wow. And he was listening. And he was listening. And then him and his friend left and had an hour long conversation. And, uh, and so our prayers is, you know, that he keeps coming or if when we get to the blue house, we're connected because yeah. of Weber State, you know, who knows. But, um, you know, you, this, the spirit leads when you're supposed to speak. Um, and if you don't, he redeems that. We've seen that time and time again because it is awkward and it is hard and you want to do it in love. Sure. Um, but at the end of the day, um, there can't be half truth. There's no, either truth or, truth, or truth or not. And so, um, you know, getting into the word, being equipped for those moments um, to defend the gospel yeah. is and trusting the Bible and right. trusting Jesus, that, that that is the gospel. Right, that, right. And, uh, yeah, it's a glorious message. And, and there is such a freedom. Yes, yeah. yes. Now, prayers for me are so totally different. I guess your prayers are, you feel, <laughs> yes. are full of speaking to your Savior and to right. Jesus. Right, and, and when, when, that, when that switch happened, uh, religion versus relationship, yeah. um, I think that's, it was just a progression from there because I went through a season where um, God just brought me to understanding what prayer is. And it is the depths of this intimacy with yeah. um, our Savior that you can't even comprehend. Or, and, and, and in the Mormon church, you just, you have no idea. I mean, I can still recite the prayers. Yeah. You know? Almost. To, uh, they verbatim. Weren't, yeah, they weren't planned prayers. No, were, no, yeah. but for dinner I had a, a we had yeah. a certain way we prayed for certain things. There were certain things that we said. And so, um, but no. Um, yeah. Well, Taylor, our little. time is up. You're such a delight. And I well, wish you, you and Nick me. so, so much success in what Thanks. you're doing. And I know you're such sweet people and a great family. I'm sure you'll just touch so many lives and well, encourage you. people. I think that's, that's helpful too, is just yeah. to encourage them as they go through their journey. So yeah. thank you and we'll see you again on Ex-Mormon Files.